How about my review of Fury 7 directed by James Wan, a high octane action flick that once again follows Dominic Toretto and his crew as they have become targets of a revenge plot as a result of their escapades in London. Fury 7 is of course the 7th installment in the Fast and Furious series and I've only seen the first 4 in full. Hadn't seen any of the 5th ones, seen bits and pieces of the 6th one on TV and to be honest with you, I wasn't the biggest fan of it because, well, I just thought it was just overly cheesy. In short, I just really couldn't get into it despite all the praise saying that it's actually the best Fast and the Furious film. But as for the first one, I actually really liked it as a kid. Now of course, you know, when you're a kid, you're not watching something that would be deemed to be the epitome of art for the lack of a better saying. But looking back at the first film even today, albeit I haven't seen it in forever, I still think it's kind of a cool film. Not only that, but if you compare the first film to the films that came later, it's a pretty grounded film. And of course, you know, you look at the others, you know, where they pretty much just threw everything out the window and just went ape shit. So as far as the first one goes about being just a cool film about cool cars, I would say it gets a thumbs up. So now we fast forward to Fury 7, a film that just says, screw the laws of physics, screw the laws of everything that you have come to know about anything, and we're just going to go just batshit insane. And this film does indeed go batshit insane. Forget about story, forget about characters, let's just make a film that features all these people doing insane shit with these really cool cars. And I mean, that's essentially the film. And I think on that aspect, you know, if you're somebody who is looking for a spectacle, then you're going to get what you're looking for. And in the past, I have complained about films that are high on spectacle and are low on substance, but what makes this different from a film, let's say, like Transformers, is that the spectacle here is actually entertaining, it's actually fun to watch. And not only that, but it's also kind of inventive, I mean, in the sense like it's always trying to top itself in terms of, you know, what new stunt, what cool thing can we do, you know, next. And I think on that aspect, the film succeeds, you know, really, really well. The action sequences, although they are edited too quickly, they do look good, and the CGI is actually, I would say, it's pretty good in the film as well, because there are a lot of times where I really couldn't tell, you know, what was practical and what was CGI. And again, even though these sequences are edited a little too quickly, which may or may not have been the result of Paul Walker's unfortunate passing, with the use of CGI and, you know, quick takes and stunt doubles, I can kind of see, you know, why that's the case. But the fight choreography is really well done the film as well, and it is, it's, it is entertaining to watch watch and you know even though that it, you know it's just a lot of flashing essentially now as for the problems with this film i could talk about how it is convoluted how there are a lot of elements in the film that really don't make a whole lot of sense how some of it is just straight up stupid which it is indeed but i mean the film owns it and it's just like hey we're kind of wearing our faults on our sleeves i mean we know what we are we're just a stupid entertaining action flick and that's what we are and if you're expecting anything more than that then well you came to the wrong place and if you're somebody who plans on seeing this film, you have to see it in the cinema because it just roars throughout the entire film. I mean, it sounds great. And not only that, but as I've mentioned previously, it looks great as well. Now, what is the best thing about this film for me and what will probably be the best thing about this film for a lot of people is the tribute that this film gives to Paul Walker, which, to simply put it, it's beautiful. Honestly, I was really holding back the tears on this one because it felt so genuine. It didn't feel like it was trying to manipulate or it was trying to be overly sentimental. No, it felt 100% genuine, like it was coming from a true place and a lot of people's hearts who were just trying to pay tribute to their friend. And if you're somebody who is a fan of this series, and especially if you're somebody who is a fan of Paul Walker's, then this is just going to be like a gigantic punch to the gut. I mean, there's going to be a lot of gearheads coming out of the theater sobbing, and rightfully so. Overall, in case you're wondering how I think this film stacks up amongst the others, the first one is my favorite. My second favorite is probably Fury 7, so if that tells you anything. If you're somebody who is a fan of the series or you're somebody who has at least liked one of these films, then I would recommend this film. However, if you're somebody who has never been a fan of this series in any sort of way, then this is an obvious skip. So yes, don't see this. This would be a complete waste of your time. As for my rating, I'm going to give Fury 7 a good 3 out of 5. As always, I'm Colin Kirkland. And thank you so much for watching.